Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for Friday, February the 16th, 2024. In today's detailed weather forecast, we are going to really have to focus in on California, southern portion thereof, say, um, Oregon, as well as Nevada and Southern California, because there is some pretty substantial amounts of rain, heavy snow, strong winds to talk about, but... Also, there's a little bit of a snowstorm that's going to be impacting the Northeast in the next 12 to 24 hours, followed by more potential snowstorms there later next week for the Northeast. So in today's video, there's a lot to digest because this weather pattern will remain somewhat very active. So to start things off, here's a look at the global forecasting system or known as the American model, the GFS, one of our models that I like to use in today's video. And we're gonna be using two of them because there's a little bit of uncertainty for late next week for that snowstorm and I want to make sure I am covering things really well in this video so that way you guys can trust me a lot more than say oh David's hyping this up what's why is David you know so I want to keep things pretty civil and as honest as I can possible so looking at the GFS for Saturday morning we can see where our rain is going to be here over California but most importantly you know what that is right there that is moderate to heavy snowfall yet again. One of those quick sliders moving across Pennsylvania, this time covering the entire state of New Jersey, as well as, say, Delaware into Maryland. Yeah, you all are finally going to get some snow out of this, including for Long Island. More likely, you're going to get a few inches. So some good snow coming your way, and enjoy it while it lasts, because there's not going to be a whole lot of it left um, after this system passes through, it's going to probably be uh, going to end up melting because we're not going to be talking about repeated snowstorms over the same area. All right, so let's put this into uh, motion here. All right, and this is for Saturday afternoon and evening for the West. And you can see the f uh, second system because we had Wednesday's system and now we're looking at Saturday's. So this is storm number two knocking on the door here over California. High elevation snow for the Sierras. So if you're going skiing, I know my aunt is up skiing right now. I think she's in Heavenly. She's somewhere in the mountains actually skiing. I wish I can go up to the snow, right? But instead, I'm here working and making content for you all, which is you guys are more important than anything else. Yes, my family is important, but you guys are just as important as my family is so, yes, hopefully she gets back safe before the snow gets going tomorrow or late tonight, right? Because it's going to be nasty up there tomorrow. Winter storm warnings already out for that area. And for the deep south, for Florida, um, also a little bit on the inclement side. Moderate to heavy rainfall as a stalled front kind of drapes across the area. But otherwise, if you go north, looking at some tranquil weather, not too much in the way of cold weather, not too much in the way of wind, and that's what we all like to see, right? Nice, quiet weather, because the West is going to be stealing it a lot from you all. So, like, typically, it should be active in the Deep South. California is going to steal all the moisture, isn't it? So, let's go forward. So, Sunday or Saturday's system moves through really quickly. It's going to be the weaker, but then guess what? There's another one. This is going to be a much stronger system for Sunday night into Monday, um, February the 18th and the 19th. So we're again, this is when we're going to be seeing the, the best chances for flooding, some um, excessive runoff into small creeks and streams, because this could stall out. And if this stalls out for any given amount of time with any intense rainfall bands within that cold front, we could be talking some pretty serious flood concerns on our streams, creeks, um, street flooding, urban flooding, that sort of thing. The major rivers, I'm not too concerned about those to come up very significantly, but we could see those getting close to monitor flood stage, which is below minor flood stage. So it's basically another way of letting the USGS no, um, say that, okay, this river is at monitor stage. We need to keep a close eye on it because if it reaches this flood stage, minor flood stage, then we could see some inundation 
to some uh, low-lying areas that don't normally get flooded. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a flood concern exists Sunday night into perhaps Tuesday. All right, with the U.S., much of the United States seeing quiet weather, right? And then something interesting could end up happening here. I'm going to try to make this quick here because I feel like I'm discussing a lot of California than other areas because other areas are not going to see a whole lot of weather, right? Maybe a few clouds and that's it. So as you all know, and this has been going all over social media, that Monday bears watching for severe thunderstorms in the Sacramento, the San Joaquin, and the Stanislaus Valley of the Central Valley in California. If we get severe thunderstorms, and if they look significant enough, I might have to go live, not just live on the computer, but actually using my smartphone and actually getting in my car and driving and looking at these storm systems. So therefore, Monday is a weather action day or a weather aware day for much of our area because any severe thunderstorm that takes advantage of the moderate cape that we're going to see out of this uh, some colder air aloft we could see some nickel to quarter size hail perhaps with the strongest thunderstorms we could see funnel clouds remember what i posted on twitter that might come back onto twitter again um, if i catch another funnel cloud or if there's a tornado i'll be sure to post that Boy, if I can see my first actual tornado in person, I will literally scream because I've never seen one in my entire life. And we could see some very intense tor uh, torrential downpours uh, because some of these uh, rain cores could have a lot of water with them because of the PWAP values. So we could see some flooding concerns as well in very isolated areas. And of course, the damaging winds. We could see 40 to 55 plus mile an hour wind gusts with these thunderstorms. Okay, and non-thunderstorm wind damage perhaps on Monday as well. So Monday is not looking like a day that you want to be adventuring to going to a park or anything because when thunder roars, go indoors. All right, so enough with that. I s took two minutes just to kind of talk about what Monday might have in my area. But severe weather is a possibility. I just want to get that out there to a lot of you that live in the Sacramento Valley and even along the coast, we could see water spouts too along the Big Sur, the San Mateo coast as well. This system is still over us. This is Tuesday. Look at the green over California. Nevada getting some snow, high elevation snow for the mountains. This is Tuesday. This is not Sunday. This is going to hang around for maybe two to three days over our area. While the much of the Midwest sees some much quieter weather and then then when California gets some calmer weather by the middle to late next week of February the 21st and the 22nd, we're then going to have to switch our eyes over to the Midwest because maybe the Midwest might see more actionable weather by, say, Thursday or Friday. But there's a lot of uncertainty in the models for that big snowstorm, maybe for the Northeast. More on that in just a second from the Euro because you can see maybe a couple of waves in there by next weekend of February the 24th and the 25th. A lot of uncertainty in that. I'm going to quickly go through the Euro. Sorry, I'm rubbing my nose a lot. I don't think I'm getting a cold. It's probably just allergies. I don't know why I'm having allergies today. I just don't see what, what the purpose is. I mean, it's cool outside. It's cloudy, but heck with it. I guess I'm way hypersensitive this year to allergies than I typically do. All right, stop being distracted, David. Let's focus on the weather instead of whoop, allergies. Okay, so the Euro, let's go forward. First snowstorm goes through. We talked about that on the GFS. We all know what's going on in California, but I want to really pay attention to what, what might end up happening for the, the last second to last weekend of February. Actually, the last full weekend of February, that is the 24th and the 25th. We might get a nor'easter. Now, while the GFS is not really hyper-intensive on the system or optimistic, the Euro is pretty bullish. The 12Z run, look at this, could get a big old fat nor'easter for Friday next week, the 23rd and the 24th of February. This is bear watching as 
we get closer, we'll probably get a lot, we'll definitely get more agreement on what exactly happens. But there's a very slim chance this happens because if we look at the previous Euro model, it wasn't there. Where is it? You might ask, right? And now here it is. The GFS has been going back and forth with this. So there is no guarantee that there will be a Nor'easter next weekend, but I'm just kind of um, bringing it out there to you all that we might have to watch that last weekend of February closely. So now how much rainfall could we see uh, out of the active weather for the West? Uh, a lot. Uh, that's all I'm going to say, a lot. Per perhaps maybe seven to eight inches of rainfall for the coastal mountains of California. We might see as much as three to five inches of rainfall for the Sacramento Valley, perhaps for the foothills, maybe as much as four to six inches of rainfall for California or for Florida, that is, maybe in the range of about one to two and a half inches of rainfall. But look at this, not much going on here for the Midwest other than some mild temperatures. And we'll get to more on that in just a second. Snowfall totals for the Intermountain West. Again, we're looking at a lot. Okay, so the, the National Weather Service specifically, the Euro doesn't capture this very well because it's a global computer model. It's not a very good high-res model. It's high-res in some degree, but the Meso models do a better job at capturing that. And we'll be looking at that into tomorrow once we get all the high-res models in view of what will be seen Sunday night into Tuesday morning at least. But right now, we could see several feet of snowfall, perhaps up to four, even five feet of snowfall for the Sierra Mountains from Sunday or basically from tonight all the way through middle of next week. For the Northeast, is still in question about that Nor'easter, but the first snow or the snowstorm that you're seeing now, you can get an additional two to five inches of snow at the very most with additional snow thereafter if that Nor'easter actually comes to pass. So now looking at our temperature anomalies, there are big weather pattern changes in the temperature department, and that's because our NAO is going to go positive. And what that means is your temperatures are going to get to being above average. No more negative NAO, right? It's going to flip on us and that's going to change our temperature pattern. So instead of you all complaining about how cool it's kind of been in some areas, you're going to wonder where the cooler air went. So if we go forward here, this is four to nine days out on our temperature anomaly forecast from the European Ensemble. Again, this is the EPS, basically, and this is a more better picture of what might end up happening. And you can see uh, out to 8 to 13 days out through the end of February could warm up pretty significantly in many areas in the Midwest and even the Northeast. So say goodbye to the cool and say hello to the above average temperatures while the West is going to enjoy temperatures below average to end out February and to begin early March. The reason why, again, is that NAO. We're looking at a positive or a negative NAO right now that is characterized by low pressure over the Northeast and even over Greenland, but you will see that change here. Once we go forward on the European Ensemble, we can see some Greenland blocking anomalous ridging over here, and we get more rid uh, troughing over British Columbia and out across the West, maybe some undercutting over here, and that usually leads to more ridging over here in the Greenland, northeastern U.S., even in portions of Hudson Bay. And that's characterized by a positive NAO. Okay, not negative. It's a positive, And that means above average temperatures will likely be returning through uh, for the last half of February for many areas. Alrighty, now before I do end this video, don't click away from the video folks or else you are you don't care about with what I'm gonna say here. This is pretty important that I want to address with you all in my announcements, all right? So as you all know that my 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, um, seasonal forecast is expected to be released on April the 15th. Okay, April the 15th, that is nearly two months from today. Actually, to be specific, it's less than two months away, but you get the idea. April the 15th, 
I will be releasing my seasonal Atlantic hurricane forecast. And a lot of you are probably like, oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm excited because this Atlantic hurricane season will be very different from what we had last year. Okay, we're talking not only more named storms, potentially, but a very busy season and potentially many more landfalls could be possible because of that La Nina that is expected to develop. So on the 15th of April, we'll be breaking down why I think this Atlantic season, hurricane season, will be very busy, perhaps even hyperactive. That is a potential on the docket uh, for this season. Secondly, I have a Discord server, Weather Force. I encourage you all to join by clicking the link in the description below this video where you could interact with not only me, but Butter Dog, Diana, Drift Racer is in there, Trey, as well as uh, Alpha Nut. And then you got other people in there. You got Caleb, um, you got Chase McLean, you got uh, just a lot of people that love to interact with me and everything like that. So if you all want to participate in the Discord server, you can post images, videos, and pictures. You don't want to miss it. Link is in the description below this video to join today. It is 100% free. Lastly, I want to proudly present you all that I am working on releasing my wind footage, damaging wind footage from the great storm of February the 4th. 2024 that we had nearly about two weeks ago. Can't believe it's been that long already. Where we had wind gusts between 50 to 70 miles an hour in the valley. So I will be releasing that first to my, uh, for my, for the people that support me, um, you know, through memberships. And then that will be released shortly after. You can see these winds right here. This is just kind of the trailer of what I'm about to show you all when I release that video. You guys cannot miss it. I'm looking forward to having you all see it because boy, this took a lot of time into filming different areas, different aspects of the storm and everything like that. So I'm excited to release that very soon here on the YouTube channel. But first I gotta make it and edit it and do all that shenanigans before this gets released to you all that are able to view this. And then lastly, um, be sure to share, like, and subscribe for more further weather content on the channel. Sorry, I'm uploading this a little later than my schedule. I'm just busy with everything right now. Big storm, we're getting ready. Nothing like this, though, but we're dealing with more high winds and heavy rainfall for the weekend into early next week. But anyways, you all, thank you for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.